Brian, good afternoon to you. What's your macro outlook here as we hit some record closes yesterday? Wildly bullish, Nicole, as always. Um, no, I think, uh, you know, at this point, I think we're going to see the economy continue to reopen. Um, we're going to start to see more people go back to work. I think one of the bigger deals is the fact that about 25 states are going to start to opt out of those extra benefits that the government's providing anyone who's unemployed. So I think that's going to push a lot of people back to work. And we already know that GDP growth is just going to be hot, hot, you know, something like 8% this quarter. And then next quarter uh, should be up again. And we're looking at annualized growth of like six to 7%. So, you know, I think bottom line is the economy is going to continue to reopen. Um, you know, business activity is going to continue to pick up. And I think that bodes well for the economy. And I also think the market here as well will follow suit and earnings are going to continue to come in better and better, which are all very, very bullish signs, you know, as we go into the next half I, of the year. I find your comment, all roads lead to higher yields into the end of the year as we creep higher today above the 1.5 percent mark on the 10 year. What's going on here and why is that? that why do you say that? Well, I know you're talking a lot about uh, with George, just commodity prices starting to come down. I mean, lumber cost, uh, which went through the roof, right? We, we saw them going from like 300,000 board per feet up to like 1,700. Uh, now they've come down about 40, 50%. I think you're at like $970 uh, per thousand board feet. So, you know, we've seen this huge move up. We've seen a pullback in commodity prices, which makes sense. You know, the old saying is, the only cure for higher prices is higher prices. So there is a saturation point with commodities and that's very inflationary. But if they start to come down those prices, that means that maybe inflation's temporary. But, you know, to me, the real key here is and the real inflationary driver is wages. And if you look at outstanding jobs that haven't been filled, we have like something like close to nine million jobs outstanding as of April. Um, anybody who's working in a hotel, a restaurant, you're seeing their annualized wages go up by 20%. Like that's a huge jump in wages. And you know, the thing about wages is once you start raising wages, it's not like companies can kind of backtrack on that and say, oh, by the way, we're going to start to lower wages now. So that's the real cost that companies have to deal with going into the end of the year. And again, as people go back to work, as they get off of these benefits from the government, uh, because you know it's kind of prohibitive for some people right now, they're getting paid more by the government to go back to work. Um, but those benefits are going to phase out. And as daycare opens again, kids go back to school again, that's going to enable a lot of people to come back into the workforce. I think your biggest risk here is some sort of labor shortage going into the end of the year. And if that's the case, wages are going to continue to rise, which means consumers have more money. And if they have more money, they're going to spend more money, which means demand goes up. So if you're a company, your demand's going up. Um, you've got to pay more wages. That just says prices are going to continue to go higher. And if prices go higher, you have more inflation. That means interest rates are going higher if you can grasp all that, Nicole. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. And then I think that when we look at what's going on with the world of inflation waiting on the Fed, what do you think we'll hear from the Fed tomorrow? What would you like to hear from the Fed tomorrow? I don't know if we're there yet, but I suspect the next thing you're going to hear from the Fed is not we're raising interest rates, but we're going to start to taper on the bond buying. So if tomorrow's that day, it's not the day. You know, I think the Fed's going to be very, very strategic in their language. But again, going into the end of the year, if we have these inflationary pressures, at some point here, the Fed is going to be forced to taper the bond buying. And then eventually, maybe early next year, we start to see rates go up. And if interest rates go up, we know that's bad for bond prices. Bond prices go down, and it's bad for long duration assets. That's the reason why technology mm -hmm. stocks have underperformed this year. They did better in the last couple of days because yields did come down a little bit. But as a longer term play, you know, the cyclical trend seems to be in place here where inflation is going to go higher, which is bad for tech, bad for bonds, but very, very good for those cyclical names like energy stocks, materials, all the stuff I've been talking about on your show, but I've also been talking about on my podcast, Pain Points of Wealth. We had identified a lot of these trends like six months ago. And you know that's what's happening. You know I think that's going to be the continued trend, especially here going into the end of the year as that labor market just keeps yeah. going up. As oil is uh, hit 72 today, 71, 78 on my last check, for oil, what are your thoughts? I think you like some of the oil stocks for picks and investing, right? Well, I loved oil back uh, last summer when no one liked oil. Um, and again, it's something mm -hmm. we've identified, I think, even on your show, on my podcast. And now oil has had an astronomical move. The energy sector has been the best performer this year. And look, if you look at a chart of oil, and I have one up there now, it's like your favorite ride of great adventure, right? There's nothing more volatile than commodity or oil prices. 
So I do think the longer term trend is up in oil. We may see some more volatility in here. I don't think we're going right to $100 a barrel. Uh, but George alluded to this uh, earlier here in your show. But basically, you're starting to see less investment as we move to more, uh, you know, we'll say economically or environmentally friendly type of energies. Like when we look at solar, we look at wind. So there's going to be less spend on finding more supply. So the problem is demand's going to continue to rise. You know, this year as the economy wakes up, if you look at the trend over the next decade, you know, oil is going to, we're going to go up to like 107 million barrels a day of demand. We're only at like $97 million a day, uh, barrels a day, excuse me, 97 million barrels a day. Demand right now or the end of this year will be there. That's a huge jump. Natural, uh, natural gas as well should go up the next decade. So you've got demand going up and you've got supply essentially being underinvested. Uh, and finding more oil. Mm. And you know, basically that trend means when you have less supply, more demand, that's going to continue to drive those prices higher over the next decade. So yes, I'm very bullish on oil. I think you want to have energy stocks in your portfolio that pay great dividends. Valuations are cheaper than the market. So for all those you know, economic reasons, you definitely want to have that in your portfolio right now.